Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome back to another On The Road video brought to you by appliancevideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Today we're looking at a Whirlpool French door refrigerator and the issue is it's not making any ice whatsoever. So, um, first thing we're going to do in a no ice situation is verify that we have uh, water coming to the refrigerator. And if we have a water dispenser, that's a good way we can test that. We'll go ahead and just take a cup and see if we get any water coming out of the dispenser. The tools needed for this repair are a flat blade screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and a quarter inch nut driver. All right, so our water dispenser is inside of the refrigerator here on the wall. And we're just gonna check and see. And we got water coming out of there. It's pretty good water pressure. It's not bad at all. Um, so we do have water to the refrigerator and through the dispenser. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually get to the ice maker and see why uh, we're not getting any ice. All right, next, you always wanna make sure that your freezer is cold enough to produce ice. Uh, freezer should maintain temperature around zero to five degrees. Um, we'll produce ice up to about 15 degrees. Um, you might get a little slow production around that temperature, but we are cold enough in our freezer so we can eliminate that possibility. Um, next, you wanna take a look at the ice maker itself. Uh, we have the ice maker arm here and you want to make sure it's in the on position and that somebody didn't turn it off. This here would be the off position for the ice maker to manually shut it off and just the arm as it was down is in the on position. So um, that's all good there. It was on, in the on position. So uh, next what we'll do is actually check inside of the ice maker to see if we have any frozen cubes or any water and I'm just kind of getting my finger down in there and there is nothing. There's no cubes. Uh, there's no water. So we're just, uh, we're not, appear to be not getting any water to the ice maker, so therefore it's not producing any ice. So next, what we can do is manually cycle the ice maker and see if, once it gets to the point where it calls for water, if we're getting any water, or if we can hear our, our valve turning on to bring water to the refrigerator, all that kind of good stuff. So. Uh, to do that, on this ice maker, we're going to need to remove this Phillips screw to remove the cover on the ice maker head there. Okay, so to manually cycle the ice maker through a test cycle, we're going to need to use a jumper wire and we're going to be going from uh, the T terminal and the H terminal, these two holes here. So we're gonna go ahead and insert a jumper wire um, that's stripped back about a half of an inch so we can get in there and get good contact. So we're gonna put that jumper wire in there like that. And on this particular model, we need to have the door switch closed so that it'll run through a cycle. So we'll go ahead and um, best thing to do is probably take a piece of tape and, and tape the door switch closed. Um, so now, with the door switch closed, and the jumper wire in place, the ice maker is going to turn on and start cycling through. You can see the fingers on the ice maker rotating. And you'll actually hear once, about, the, about 15 seconds from when it starts or so, you will actually hear a click from the ice maker. And once you hear that click, you can remove your jumper wire. It's no longer needed um, to finish the cycle in the ice maker. Um, and if you leave, if you don't remove it within a reasonable amount of time, the ice maker will not fill with with water. It's actually going to bypass that. So once you hear that click, you do want to remove your jumper wire, and you should see that the ice maker still continues through the cycle. Okay, the ice maker has gone through a full cycle, and we did not get any water that entered into the ice maker, but I could hear um, the water valve on the back of the refrigerator did kick on and was humming, trying to bring water to the ice maker. So at this point. Uh, we know the ice maker is working, it's sending power to the water valve. Um, we could have, knowing that we have water pressure to the refrigerator, we know we do have water to the inlet valve, so we could have a faulty inlet valve. We know electrically it's good, but it could not, you know, it could be frozen, the solenoid could be, could not be opening to allow water to flow through, or we could have a clog somewhere through the system. Um, 
common thing is to have the clog would be in the actual fill tube here in the freezer. Uh, water that travels through that into the ice maker freezes and can eventually uh, freeze solid or clog the fill tube here. So what we'll do is remove the ice maker and take a look back at the fill tube here. To do that, there's two quarter inch screws uh, here and here that hold the ice maker in place. There's actually gonna be uh, a third one underneath through a bracket as well. The two on the top, we just have to loosen. We don't have to remove completely. Uh, the ice maker is kind of a keyed, keyed tabs there that we can lift it off. So uh, we'll just loosen those and we'll remove the bottom one. So now we can just take the ice maker and lift up and off of the screws at the top there. Okay, and we can kind of set that. If you have your racks in here still, it can just kind of set right there. Only other thing to remove to get the ice maker out completely would be our wiring harness here. There's tabs, two tabs on either side that you have to release to pull the uh, harness off. And here's our fill tube here and now we can inspect that. Um, we actually can see there is some ice inside of that fill tube way up inside there. Um, so that is actually, you know, creating our blockage, which is not allowing water to come into the ice maker when it, when it um, calls for water. Um, things that can cause that to happen are if you have low water pressure, uh, to the refrigerator and through the refrigerator, that water is traveling slowly through there and can freeze and build up until it clogs it completely. Um, or if you have a bad inlet valve where it's slowly letting uh, water come through when it's not supposed to and then that causes it to freeze up in there and also. Other than that, um, it is pretty common that they just freeze up because they just freeze up. There's not a real good explanation for it. Humidity, moisture, it has water that travels through there. We're in a freezer so it's going to freeze up. Um, and under some conditions uh, with the humidity and whatnot. So um, it is pretty typical, pretty common there. So what we need to do is clear that out of there and restore water pressure to our ice maker. Okay, so to clear the ice out of the fill tube here, oh, actually there was just a chunk of ice that fell out of there. Um, it's kind of melted by now having the door open here for a while. A couple ways to remove the ice though is you can use a screwdriver or something that you can get up in there and break it free. Um, you, know, you just want to be careful that you're not going to damage or puncture a hole in any of the, the tubing there. And a lot of times it's way up in there and it's pretty frozen, so it's not the best method, but a um, combination of turning the refrigerator off, letting it thaw a little bit, and getting up in there, you can do it. Um, also, you can use a hair dryer. Um, I wouldn't recommend a heat gun. You're probably going to damage or melt some things. Uh, so a hair dryer would be good to thaw that out. A lot of these are removable. You can actually pull this off this way. Um, and then you can take it to the sink, run some hot water through it, clear it out that way. Uh, you can also get to the back of the refrigerator where um, the piece that this connects to that brings the water line up to up through the back and through the back of the cabinet, there's going to be a couple screws or whatnot that holds that in place. Depending on the model, you can remove those and remove it uh, completely through the back, out of the back, and then you have you know full access to it. You can heat it up, um, run some water through it, uh, have good vision of it to clear it out and everything. So. That chunk of ice uh, did come out of there, so we're just gonna make sure that there's nothing else up in there. Um, sometimes there's gonna be multiple pieces. It's quite a ways up that tube there. Seems to be all clear and removed, so we'll go ahead and reinstall our ice maker and run it through another test to see if it'll fill up with water for us now. So when we place the ice maker back on here, um, we're just getting the fill tube here into the fill cup on the back of the ice maker. Uh, the wires on this one go above it. And then we're gonna set it back on our screws. And I do have the freezer door attached still. All the shelving is in here. Doesn't give you the best access to it. So if you want more access to this right here, it is, you know, because it's a tight space to work in or whatnot, you can remove your refrigerator or your freezer door and your racks inside here. All right, so we're just gonna tighten up the two quarter inch screws on top.
Okay, so now we have the ice maker all hooked up back in place. We can go ahead and run it through another manual cycle by using the jumper wire and going to the T and H inserts here, or terminals. And then we need to shut the, or close the refrigerator, or the freezer door switch. And we're gonna wait for the click. There's the click, and the ice makers run through a cycle. So we'll remove our jumper wire, and make sure that it continues. And we're just gonna wait until it gets to the fill portion and see what happens. All right, so we're just about to the spot in the cycle that it's gonna fill with water for us, or attempt to fill. Okay, and it's filling. The water valve's on. Looks like we do have, and sounds like we do have water coming into the ice maker. It just shut off. The ice maker is going to continue for a few more seconds here until it stops its cycle, finishes its cycle. Okay, so couldn't see it, but it sounded better. Um, you can hear the water flow, so I'm just going to check inside the ice maker here and see if we have water, and we do and we have good water pressure. You wanna make sure it fills the ice maker completely, all the molds in the ice maker. Um, so yeah, that was our issue. Our water fill tube was frozen, preventing the water to the ice maker, and everything is now working properly. All right, we can go ahead and put our cover back on the head of the ice maker. And that will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.